All right, we're back. Season one, episode seven of Andor. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, yeah, this is, uh, what's his name? Cyril? This is his apartment. Cyril. Cyril Carmen. Oh, it's actually his room in his mom's apartment. That's right. On Coruscant. Noticed, awesome. <laughs> he has clone trooper action figures. Check that out. Yeah. So, so honestly, I maybe, maybe I identify with this character a little bit. <laughs> I mean, I guess for the Clone Wars, because these these are definitely clone troopers, because um, you can mm-hmm. see the little spike on his helmet. This is like the first generation of clone trooper. I think this guy's a pilot, maybe. Um, that's what happened when he was like a teenager. So yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, he he idolizes the Empire, and and uh, this would have been like the right time for him in his young adulthood. Like yeah, yeah. So nice. Not much else. Keep his old room. room. That's true. His mom could have downsized, right? I mean, mm-hmm. Not much going on here other than the action figurines. That's right, yeah. Very sparse room. The window could be bigger, but it's not. That's not a lot of distance between from the windows to the... The in inlaid cabinets. So this is a newscast, mm-hmm. and they're talking about the Aldani attack. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It was just a very interesting, very 1980s... 1970s look to this newscast. I thought it was pretty cool. It's like a CRT I wonder if that, look. I wonder if yeah. that's a statement of of Cyril's mom has a very old apartment because mm-hmm. like they can do better than this in in Star Wars universe. That's right. They could do holograms. Mm-hmm. It's also bothering me that the the display is stuck in the wall. You can't. If you ever wanted to rearrange your apartment, you're just stuck with the current configuration yeah no way to upgrade have you been in houses that were like built in like the i don't know maybe late 90s maybe very early 2000s like this is the switch between having these gigantic like 40 inch cathode ray tube giant televisions uh, going into like led liquid crystal plasma as i say so like the tv's got a lot thinner a lot wider and so mm-hmm. these homes will have like this big cavernous just kind of like box in the living room and that's where your tv was supposed to go into so if this if this mom ever upgrades to a hologram, she'll like pull this out and there'll just be a hole in the wall there. That's right. Because you could put a safe or something. That's right. Or you could put all your destroyed son's feelings in a box and put it right there in the wall. I was going to say his figurines get prominently displayed, but maybe you just break them first and then put them in there. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> then it's your son's like childhood joy that's just destroyed. Ooh, this uniform. Dope. Super dope. Looks great. Yeah. Two pens. So I work for that. Two pens, one pen on each side. Little clippy guy that holds in the uh, the, the leaf, I don't know, the flap on the tunic. Mm-hmm. I mean, say what you want about the Empire. They dress well. Say what you want about the Empire. This uniform is dope as hell. Looks yeah, beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. They really have their fashion and their interior design aesthetic down. So it really feels powerful if you're a member of the Empire. They even got they even got two pen structure, one here on this side, one here right there. Let's watch yeah. for Miro. She's got two pens. I think Blevin has two pens, split sides. Mm. Did we say this is for intelligence officers have the two pens, or is it everybody in the military has two pens? I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Let's start keeping track. Okay, so this is also inside the Internal Security Bureau. And I noticed here, like, I think it's nighttime. I think it's nighttime because then this window over here, like, it looks pretty dark outside. But the inside has these, like, white, like, sterile white feeling. Feels like a hospital. Feels like a laboratory. And that's perfect for the ISB because they they operate as if there's no day-night cycles. They're always vigilant over the people. Cool. Cool touch. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it really feels powerful and official if you're working there to be in this clean environment, nice lighting, you know, sharp looking people. Great. Mm-hmm. Everyone's got one pen, two pens, bam, one pen yep. here, one pen here. Yeah. Maybe it's the Intel guys or people are all two penners and, and split shoulders. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. I think so. we'll, we'll next time we see like a military guy, we'll we'll, we'll see if they have the two pens. Also, stop. Look at the Where rankings. are your pens? <laughs> look at the rank. She's got three blue. He's got uh-huh. two blue pips. Uh-huh. No red pips. They just that's right. The other guys had three blue, two red, or four yellow, one red pips. Right. But it seems like the intelligence people go three blue, null pips. I wonder if the reds and it's not a single, a single like badge. Maybe it's half is for one part of a com- command, another half is another part of a can. So like reds or something is like it's like operational can blue uh, mm-hmm. operational command structure. Blue is the intelligence command structure. So if you have three blues and two reds, you're rank three in intel or rank two in combat. Oh, that could Maybe. be. So you could do crossover, and then the four. Oh, sorry, the the um the commander from the dam had four yellow and one red. And they definitely said he was a science slash engineer. Like engineering dude. Yeah. So he's high on the engineering dude. But if this shit goes down, there's a fight, then he's only one in red. Listen to somebody else. Maybe. Mm. Yeah, maybe. That would be an interesting like universal command structure. Because what happens here if like what happens in modern times if like if somebody outranks a senior officer wait no that doesn't make sense <laughs> if, if someone has more rank but less combat experience and you're in a combat situation like what do you do like yeah and i think it also gets really complicated like on a say an aircraft carrier in the u.s navy there's nuclear reactors and the nuclear reactor people may be lower in rank than the captain but in some instances they can override captain's orders because of their specialty and i think the same goes with medical Hmm. That a medical person can override a captain if they believe he's medically compromised or something. So while there's outranking going on, there's also, I think it gets complicated. Interesting. Hmm. So this multicolored command structure might fix that. Might fix that. So it's like, this is a combat situation where in red, then you just look for the highest red pips. Hmm. Yeah, it's complicated. Interesting. Yeah. Could be. We'll see. We'll try to piece together <laughs> their command structure. Oh, three and three. Three and three. For a six total, that's the highest we've ever seen. That's the highest we've ever seen. Dang. So if I remember Partagas, Partagas has yeah. four blue. Mm-hmm. So Partagas outranks, assuming we're right, Part of gas outranks this guy in intel, but because this guy has a bunch of red, he's in the command structure too, and so command is giving them orders. Mm-hmm. And maybe the total of six is somehow overall rank. Six is larger than five. Yeah, yeah. Because he's got three blue, three red. The total of six. Total of six. So he's high up. I don't know. Do For sure, though, he's got he's got. One pen, two pen, two pens, so many pen. So he could be, he could have come up through the ranks in the intelligence community and then gone over to operations and command. So he picked up three reds, but he's still got the pens because once a spook, always a spook. Oh, I see. Very cool. <laughs> oh yeah. Compared to, compared to, um, Miro. Miro's. Compared to Miro's three, three blue pips. Three blue pips. Yeah. Oh, two guys in the back, two pips, two pens. Two pips. That makes sense because Miro's assistant had two pips, two pens, and was uh-huh. in gray or gray brown, right. whatever that color is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those three pips is white. Very cool. Interesting. Nice touches. They really get this down. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. This is when Luthen was talking to Mon Mothma, and Mon Mothma is like, well, you're causing trouble. People are going to suffer. There's going to be starvation. There's going to be a crackdown. And Lucen's like, you got to get your hands dirty. This is rebellion. You can't just yeah. stay ethical and you keep your hands clean all day long if you want to do this thing. And she's like, damn it. And he's like, true. <laughs> and then and then in the next picture, after Mon Mothma leaves, he's like, fuck, it's going down for real. I, uh, people are going to hurt. And so he shows it on his face, but not in front of her. Interesting. Right. Nice touch. Yeah. He's like hiding hiding the distress that it causes 
because he knows yeah. he needs to bear that on him so that way she can do her work in confidence. Yeah. And or she, with he confidence. takes that he takes that burden off of her so she can do her job, you know. I had the feeling that he was like that she she was saying that the resistance network wasn't ready. And he was saying, it is, it is. And she's saying, no, we, we have to be careful. Mm -hmm. And then, and he said something like it either grows or it dies. And I thought that he was saying that he was dying. And so oh. he was like, I need to get this mission. Uh, yeah. I need to get this going before I die. And that's why he was also slipping because like he has this urgency of his life, of his lifetime scale saying like, I want mm -hmm. these missions to go like, <laughs> Oh, that could be, I didn't think about that. I thought he meant like once you've got the the apparatus in place, don't hesitate, send it, because I mean it's true. Yeah, for every day that they do nothing, it's like people sitting around saying we're part of this rebellion, but we're not. So what are we doing? So like he's got a point. If you're not doing something with with that's mission driven, then even your own soldiers are like, what are we doing here? That's right. And the longer you exist as an organization without actually stepping and up and doing missions you're going to get caught without any positive outcome that's right yeah hmm. we'll see we'll see maybe he's dying maybe he's maybe he's not we'll see i mean we're all dying oh, that's, true. <laughs> that's another okay so but but maybe he's feeling it because he's getting there mm -hmm. we don't know what's going we don't know his medical history <laughs> we'll find out maybe yeah, we'll find out his medical history. <laughs> ISB's on him. ISB's on him, that's right. Pull up his file. This is another shot of Coruscant. Just first off, they, they again they nail the the feel of density. It's just insane. You know, the density, the maintenance requirements, how vertical the city planet is everywhere. Mm -hmm. I don't see any maintenance bots going on the outside cleaning or anything but everywhere looking great i wonder Crazy. what like the airflow is like in here that's a good point because you the weather could get very strange and stagnant right depending on where you are you get like moisture build up and moldy business and that's right because there'll be parts of this that never gets any sunlight never gets warm which means you need some sort of like government coordinating ventilation networks citywide can you imagine Crazy. that? Always just a cool breeze, just designed right. by just how we designed our city. Ooh, that'd be amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, and then this is the inside of the building. So on the outside, kind of drab. On the inside, I mean, looks pretty good. Like, I think this would be a good place to work. Like, I think there are libraries that have this design, and it's just like this um, empty, open, cavernous um, inside. Um, and the reason this is good is because when you like when you speak to someone next to you, the sound just goes off into the room and it never bounces back. So it's actually a very quiet work environment. Mm. Now it sucks that you're like looking at this like light beam across your eye. So it's it's very it's still the empire. They're like look down, don't cross across this line. But at least you can be quiet. You can focus on your work. Mm. You would think it'd be a bit soul crushing to be like one in ten thousand workers at each having their own little cubicle. I mean, it'll be soul crushing, but at least it won't be a noisy like open office plans are now. Yeah. It's a glass half full mentality. Love it. Yeah. If I'm, if I'm oppressing the galaxy, I want to do it in a noiseless environment. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. But I'm going to make my lookers, my, 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 I'm going to make my workers look right at this, this bright beam in front of their face all the time. What is the bright beam you're talking about? Oh, the bright beam. It's just, it's this railing that's right around each, each and every seat. That's right. So if this can guy, go, can you go red? I can't see that. I can go red. I'm going to go big. So this railing that goes around this guy's station mm -hmm. right here around the back as well. Like anytime this guy looks up from his station, oh, he's going to see this white beam across his face. <laughs> I see. So it's like, so Keep your eyes down or you get blinded a little bit. So keep looking down and keep working. Hmm. Yeah, that's or look straight up into the cavernous above you. Yeah. <laughs> you like echo and nothing comes back. 
Yeah, and you can just scream and nobody will hear you because your screams of despair go off into the Imperial Cavern. (gasps) That's super awesome. Like you don't realize that the person next to you is having a personal breakdown. You just keep working. You don't even notice. Just keep working. This is actually, this is super productivity. Yep. Perfect. (laughs) I think this is modeled after a a famous library. I I forget the name of it, but Mm. I think it is. is I think I know what you're talking about, but. Cool. Good enough. That's all we need. Close enough. So I didn't know who this was. I but yeah. this is Luthen's assistant, right? In yes. the Kayla. Yeah, in Kia? the antique shop. Yeah. Kayla? Kila. I don't know. I forgot. Let's look it up. Let's look it up. In our character. Map. She works for Luthen. Clea. Clea Markey. Clea Markey, okay. And I got some kind of interesting feelings from her. I wasn't sure if she was Did on you? board with all of Luthen's action, actions. Um, oh, no. So here she she's, is. His, oh, go ahead. She's walking through Coruscant. And yeah, what is she doing again? She is walking through like the, I guess, not so ritzy part of Coruscant. And she's going to go meet up with Vel Sartha, the, the leader of the, of the um, strike team cell. And yeah, ch- touch and base with her, see what's going on, I guess. Okay. I wonder why the in-person meetup was necessary. Yeah. that's. I mean, which one's more risky? Communicating through wireless or in person? On one hand, meeting in person is risky because if anybody sees you, you've got they're together. All right. Whereas if you're talking over the internet, you're not in the same physical location, but you're putting your communications up on the internet that could be tracked. And the communications on their their Star Wars Wi-Fi can be spied upon by anywhere. When you meet in person, you only need to control the area around you, right? That's right. Like someone in Houston is not going to know that we're meeting in LA. Like they're just too far away. That's right. But, but what how I do you to point out here, oh, how oh, do you ahead, coordinate the in-person meeting without talking on the Star Wars Wi-Fi? That's yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe they just Maybe. have like a in six months meet up here. <laughs> I mean, it could be. It could be. You just have a timetable, and if the other person doesn't show up, oh well. But if the person does show up, they will show up at that exact time, place, and location, and it's never broadcast on the Star Wars Wi-Fi. I guess would you do dead drops? Maybe then. So that way you're not at the same location at the same time. That's risky, okay. though, because someone pick up your dead drop. That's right. Hmm, maybe we'll see how the coordination is actually done. The thing I wanted to talk about this scene was not about uh, Kayla or Clea. It was about oof, the pips. So this security guard, he's got <laughs> three pips and one skinny pen. Oh. No, no pen in his... In the upper right, next no, to his no second pen, and all of the ISB people had the fat, thick pen. Mm-hmm. This guy's got. What am I doing? He's got a fat, thick pen. This guy's a little skinny pen. A little skinny pen. Is that? The is ISB there not a black right. skinny pen in his upper right pocket? I'm just seeing things black. at this point. No, I don't see it. Ah, uh, yeah. This is Clea. Clea. This is Clea. Mm-hmm. Going somewhere. She, She's walking through various awesome places in Coruscant to go meet up with uh, Vel, the rebel leader. Uh, like just these like sky pedestrian walkways as they just go down as far as the eye can see. And then they continue upward. So they go upward and downward. Just mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. scale on real. And they connect between buildings. Like... You don't have to go down to the ground floor to walk over the next building. This would be like a 3D network of a maze, walkways, and like city life. This would be amazing. Yeah. I mean, if you need to get from one place to the other, you don't only you don't you only need to you not only need to know where you are in 2D space, but you need to know where you should be in 3D space. That would be Google Maps would have a really tough time with only GPS figuring out where the heck right. you are. That's a good point because we use GPS like a 2D map, so they need to make it a 3D thing. Mm. Plus, satellites aren't really going to work in with all this concrete 
and steel blocking the signal. Hmm. So challenging. Guide problem. dogs. <laughs> Imagine Star Wars where everyone had a guide dog. Oof. Be amazing. How, the guide dog is memorizing the Coruscant city layout. Wow. It's part of the job. Yeah. Guide dogs can do amazing stuff. Uh, why not just have guide people? Guide holograms. Okay, my, my offer was cute, but okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, but also, how beautiful would this be? It's like, yeah, logistically challenging to go up and down and figure out the maps, but like, just having a skywalk between buildings would be so much nicer than take the elevator all the way down, cross the street with everyone else, like right. traffic jams, nightmares, like skywalk. Yeah, but Coruscant might also be soul crushing. You know, it's just this... That's true. Concrete That's true. jungle that just never ends. You know, you don't get how would any you nature. Feel, how would you feel about a uh, make instead of having it open to the sky, we'd make it a tunnel, like a sky tunnel, and the outside is a hologram of beautiful nature. I mean, whatever works to keep that mentality in a positive state. Why not? And if you did it like if you did it very well, such that nobody knew <laughs> that they were they were actually inside a sky bridge, like. In their mental map, they're like, yeah, I am outside. Yeah. <laughs> because there's so many walkways they can't tell. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, awesome. even if even if you knew consciously that you weren't outside in some peaceful location, but your senses were still getting that, you know, nature outside the sound. Might be enough. Some part of you would still be finding some kind of serenity, even if you're in the concrete jungle of Corsa. Oh yeah. I guess I guess an easy example of that is my noise canceling headphones. Noise canceling headphones pump in sound to your ears, but it ends up sounding like nothing. Mm -hmm. it feels fine. Yeah. Another pick Ooh. of the same thing. Yeah, but is this an is what is what is this? Because there's like a walkway above and a walkway below. Maybe the bottom is a footpath and the top one it's a vehicle. Maybe maybe vehicle. Yeah. That makes sense. Oh no! Well, sure. There's flying vehicles. Maybe these are non-flying vehicles going through this uh, this tunnel here. I guess we're talking about this one tunnel. way up here. This thing, yeah, yeah, is like f maybe for freight, and then versus this walkie boy down on the bottom. Yeah, this is walking. Yeah. Look hmm. at those trusses. Look at those trusses down. This thing yeah. is rigid. They look like aftermarket repairs. From the Japanese domestic market, <laughs> this is the this is the uh, Honda Civic of bridges. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I meant like maybe maybe they had to retrofit them because they were reaching the end of their life. Uh, so they're like, you know what, we'll just add on these extra struts. Mm -hmm. And these are concrete because they require compression, and these are steel or maybe Dura steel because it's Star Wars, uh, and they work in extension. Perfect. Yeah, there you go. There you go. They work in tension? I'm not sure what the word is. They're stretchy, but strong. Yeah. And instead of drilling um, into the pillars themselves, mm -hmm. they added these, like, I don't know what you would call it. Cross brace? This, no, this, this, this whole thing is a cross brace. This, they yeah, brace yeah, yeah. that, then got, they got a huge bolt and screwed into the brace, which wait, compressed wait, 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 it onto the pillar. That's cool. That's a cool touch. Excellent engineering Coruscant. Yeah. Still following Clea. Clea, yeah. She so she stops at this symbol on the ground, which I guess is the 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 sign of like, yes, we're meeting here, we're meeting today. But this this symbol is symmetric. Like it's like, how does she know to walk left or right? Like there's no, at least for what I see, there's no reason for her to know to walk this way or to walk this way. Well, I mean, maybe, maybe the gap is critical. There's a gap here. And a gap here, whereas this is That's no gap. That's so precise. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just like the, just, you know, I, okay, I buy it. I yeah. buy it. Just like the power symbol, power symbol on your computer, or whatever. Like there's a definite yep. one direction to that. That's right. And I believe she walks this way. So <laughs> yep. you op you walk towards the gap. Towards the pointing out bit. Right. So this, and then you walk towards the gap. Yeah, I like it. Cool. We decoded okay. their system. Yep. Figured it out. ISB will hire us. 
Should hire us, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is the sleeping guy. I couldn't believe it. This guy is in the, in what is it, uh, the Imperial Security Bureaucracy? Imperial huh. Security Bureau, huh. which I think is a pretty prestigious I think so. assignment. Yeah. And he's in the command building, and he's falling asleep at his station. I was like, he's going to get himself killed. Unreal. Yeah. You know why he's, uh, you know how I could tell that he would fall asleep? How's that? No pen. Yeah, no pen. He doesn't even have his pens. Low rank. Low rank, no pen, bitch. Yeah. He's acting like this is some kind of assignment on Tatooine or something. This guy is going to get killed. no podunk planet. That's right. This is Corazon. This is the ISB. This is the premier intelligence security bureau of mm -hmm. the entire empire. It's not even a field office on Coruscant. It's like the office in Coruscant. The office. And he fell asleep with other people in the room. Although maybe, is this a droid? Yeah, I think that that's might a, be droid. a droid. And this on, guy, droid, wake him up, be a bro. Also a droid. Oh shoot! No, a bro, a bro would be would let you sleep. Droid's like, I got this covered. I don't sleep. No, but then he's not. The droid isn't like on the lookout, making sure that that's right. No, nobody's that's coming. Right. Just let him sleep. And when Miro comes in, <laughs> that's right. That's right. So after this guy leaves, the two two bots are like, "Eh, that bitch got in trouble. I hate that fucker." <laughs> they could have like, I knew yeah. she was working. I could I could hear her footsteps, but no, nah, no, nah, I'm not gonna say anything to this guy. Maybe the droids don't actually like this guy because tomorrow a new guy comes in. You know what? If I were the droids, I wouldn't like him either. Like I'm working hard on this job and this day's sleeping. Fuck this guy. Let him get caught. Yeah, okay. So they're not looking out for him. They're just going to let him sleep. If I was a droid, I'm looking out for me and my droid bro to the left. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this was just a cool shot. The Star Destroyer coming into Aldani. Oh, Super cool. And of course, Sinta, the badass, is like, whatever. So cool. I don't care. She's like, oh, yeah, I see that. Yeah, I've seen those I before. See whatever. I've seen those before. No problem. Do you need me to blow it up? I'll do it. Sure. No, unfazed. Ah, Clea and Val. Val, they, yeah. they meet underground. Underground ish. Oh, yeah, I guess underground for Corazon, mm -hmm. which is above ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is thousands of feet above ground, but thousands of feet below the tops of the buildings. Mm. <laughs> Crazy. This scene made me really like Clea. Like, I was already feeling pretty good about her when, when Luthen has, like, he's wavering and she's like, no, tighten up. You're like, she's super mm -hmm. focused. This is like, the boss's bitch energy I've ever seen. Like she's like I wonder is she running the rebellion? Like, like Luthen does the action, Von Mothma does the talking, but she's like, she's making sure that those, or at least Luthen is in line. Like that he's focused, he's on the mission. So do you think her and Luthen are are team, or do you I mean, think she's they're... more in, more in control of the situation, and Luthen's the money it, man? It's. It's an interesting dynamic. Like he's in charge. He is the the leader, I guess, but like she's his underling, but very much close to him. Like they're not they're not super mm -hmm. distant. Like like he listened to her when she calls him out. Like she, yeah. she will call something for safety reasons and he'll like like resist, but he's like, You're right. And so like he really I think I think he's ranked above her, but he really listens to her. Mm -hmm. And she knows it. She like steps up. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll learn more about her as uh, time goes on here. But I wonder what their relationship dynamic really is. We'll see. Ah, uh, yeah. So Andor, Cassian Andor, he comes back to Molana 1 and he wants to find his adopted mom. He wants to try to get her off the planet. And she's like, first of all, she sleeps with a gun. Fucking awesome, Strap. awesome grandma. Grandma's just strapped 24-7. And then she walks up to the door and she's like, who is it? But like, I feel like this is a window. <laughs> like, like, actually, you can see her reflection and his face. So like, this is the biggest people oh, yeah. possible. <laughs> it's just like a, it's a, it's a fat portal. Like, that would make me really uncomfortable, especially if I had was so insecure in my, you know, bodily security that I had to sleep with a gun. 
these open portholes in my apartment would make me really uncomfortable because any passerby can just look in and start planning to break in or whatever. Right. Maybe or have there. you ever done the thing where somebody rings your doorbell and you like you like pretend not to be home? Oh yeah, all the time. All the time. I, I can't do that here. <laughs> like no, head pops around see. the corner. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh. Yeah, plus you ever seen the movies where they do the peephole gun shoot? Mm hmm. Here you don't even need to you don't even have to wait until they get to the peephole. You just blast them through the windows. The window that's already there. You're like, where is he? He's just right there. I can see him in the window. Mm-hmm. What if this curtains. is bulletproof glass? This is this is the bait. It makes your rick- the bullet ricochet back at the attacker. <laughs> do you think she's she owns this place or she's renting it? Ooh. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Feels like she's renting it, in which case she's probably not going to be able to make those modifications. That's true. That's true. That's right. Maybe she she's not uh, she doesn't have much money because she doesn't turn the heat on. So it must be like you know that that level of on the edge of financially. Oh, yeah. So it's probably renting then. At the same time, this is a really nice like apartment slash condo slash whatever it is. Yeah. Roomy. It's got a nice interior. She can't afford the heat. How about downgrade the apartment to a smaller place and upgrade the heat? That being said, if if it's if I can just put on a jacket and it's close enough, all right. Like I need to run the heater. Maybe the heater's real inefficient here. That's what I'm saying. It's downgrade the apartment so that the heating bill is not so high. I it's see. better to be warm yeah. in a small place than cold, especially as an older woman, than cold in a big place, right? True. Yeah, why stress your body on having to deal with cold? That's right. Just threaten the heater with your gun. Heat better! And then it'll do, it'll do its job. Get down! No, get hot. <laughs> that makes no sense. <laughs> oh, the heater the heater in this world could be a could be a droid. <laughs> You're like threatening it. He's like, ah, That's right. don't know Black <laughs> Oh, so this is Mon Mothma. What is this guy's name? Oh, shoot. I don't know his name. I don't know his name. He's a new character. He's like a senator, a fellow senator of Mon Mothma. And somehow is in he, this conversation. So. No, 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 no. He's not tr- oh, no, no. He's a banker. That's right. He's a banker. I think he's from the same planet as her. Okay. But somehow they oh, were yeah, trying to feel each friends. other out. Gross. They're trying to feel each other out as like, are they on the rebels? Is they loyal to the empire? Like, where do they stand? And they're trying to figure it out yeah but super risky super risky that they're having this conversation at a party full of other people and knowing that like her husband is like i don't know if he's he's aligned with the empire but he's certainly unsympathetic he, he's certainly apathetic to the rebel people like whatever and certainly at this party there's going to be in people who support the empire who are being treated very well by the empire Probably even Imperial spies who are just keeping tabs on heavy hitter parties on Coruscant. Right. Just listen. What what a risky conversation. Even them like standing together at this party, people are like, what the hell? What are they doing? I mean, they are childhood friends and she says they're reminiscing, but true. It's risky. Like it's just so risky to have this conversation in front of people. Mm-hmm. What they should have done is got everyone to think that they were having an affair. And then that, you know, oh, yeah. stops all it's rumors. Normal. They're like, oh, they're just talking because, you know, they're going to. They might they might go there by accident because I think the husband gets real jealous about this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, rightfully so. There's a little little uh, little chemistry going on here between these two. No chemistry. Yeah. This the banker friend. He makes some snips. Mm-hmm. Some little digs, little digs at the husband. Why do you got to do that, dude? Yeah. 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 Also, this party. This party here is the centerpiece, like like the table, and with all these these food here, look at these delicious, delicious food, delicious food, delicious food. None of it has been touched, all the way down the table. No one's touching this food, and I think, I think it's because these floral pieces are too tall. They're too tall. They cut off conversation. I can't talk with somebody across the table. They're in my way, and as such, nobody's eaten any of these beautiful hors d'oeuvres. Or everybody's just so rich that they don't even care about these just amazing hors d'oeuvres. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Eating I at mean, a party, that's for poor people. 
<laughs> I mean, if I was if I was there, I was like, holy, give holy me, fuck, wrap it up. Holy fuck, I'm a student forever. <laughs> <laughs> It looks so good. Oh, the presentation. Oh, that's right. That's right. I would, I would just take a whole plate, oh. <laughs> slide them over, just spread them out <laughs> even geometrically, geometrically, like yeah. go to the bathroom, just chum, 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 chum. go to the, find her closet. Chum, 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 chum. <laughs> Guess that what's happened. That's what happens if you're wealthy. Just don't care about these brilliant hors d'oeuvres. Brilliant hors d'oeuvres that somebody spent hours and tons of money. Oof. The labor alone. Oh, so here we're back on. I believe the planet is called Ferrix, if I remember correctly. And um, this is mm, 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 mm. this is Molana One. Ferrix is the planet with the where he Andor went looking for his sister, and where the security guys were. This is this is Bix's uh, place. Yes, yeah, so is Molana One. Wait, no, but Molana One. They should. Okay, so I'm confused. Because now I'm confused. When, Morlana one, they showed the corporate headquarters. And I thought oh, that's shit. that's where um Cassian was looking for his sister, and he did the killing of those two brothel patrons on Morlana One. And then he comes back to Ferrix. Oh, that's what I thought. This Could is be wrong. No, no, no. I, I yeah. if if that is true, then I've been I've had them backwards the whole time. Because originally so we thought Morlana One and Ferrix were the same place, and then they showed the corporate guy is going on their ship to Fer- to Ferrix. And mm-hmm. now I think this is Ferrix. I, okay, I, so I think this is Ferrix. Sure. Also, the name Ferrix makes sense with all this brown, rusty stuff everywhere. That's true. That's true. Because uh, Ferris means My iron. Ferris. Yeah. Yeah. It, it actually might be. Yeah, it might be. Yeah. So this is Bix's right. place. And remember, she's uh, some kind of mechanic. And yeah, I was she just, owns a store. The, yeah. And all I see here are, I see like engine cowlings. Like right here is a cowling. And then maybe up here is a cowling. And then a couple over here on the shelf. Sorry, what's a cowling? A cowling is the outside of a turbine. So there's all these like like pipes and electronics and stuff. And then you cover it with a cowling. Does the cowling like guide the airflow? I guess I can't. I, uh, I think it's just the outside. I actually don't know if the definition includes the guiding airflow on the inside. Okay. Hmm. And then anyway, I think the, I the see, outside shell. Yeah, yeah, the outside shell. And then I think I see gearboxes. Oh like yeah. Right there. Yeah. And these look like turbine gearboxes as well. Like right here. That's that's a that's a bad alignment right there. Right there. <laughs> maybe. Right there. So these all look like this... gas turbines. So it's yeah. got to be pod racing. It's gotta be it's gotta be pot racing. <laughs> yeah. I thought it might be like mining stuff or something in the place, or maybe that's how they get the red juice out. But um yeah, you know what? Pot racing. You know, it could also gas turbines have a lot of applications in different areas. It could be mining equipment. I'm just surprised they're using turbines. Yeah. Maybe it's some kind of advanced Star Wars turbine that uses special materials and special fuel. I don't know. I mean, it could be for mining, but where's the big money at? I don't know if the big money's in pod racing. No way. See that crowd in episode one? It's a huge crowd. That's so many huge people. Crowd, yeah. But the huts take all the money. The huts take all the money. That's true. You That's want to true. stay out of their business. True. Yeah. Anyway, this is a cool shot. Bix's place. It's got stuff everywhere. Yeah. Also, go back and watch this. When Cassian knocks on the door to get Bix out, he goes, duck, 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 duck. Yeah, and you're like, where's the duck, 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 duck? And he doesn't do it. Across the galaxy, he does the same <laughs> knock that we do. <laughs> we know his secret code. <laughs> That's right. It's not really Whoa. a secret knock. That's right. This is a scene where Bix is talking with Marva, if I remember. Is that right? No, I think this is this is where she's talking with Cassian before she goes to talk to Marva. Bix is talking with with Cassian and she's saying like, hey, get out of here. Like people are getting squeezed. We're getting pressured. Not mm-hmm. every, people aren't going to be loyal to you for very long. Like, is she going to turn on Cassian? I don't think so. I mean, but he's he's fucking up her life. Like, yeah, this is in line with the 
so the rebellion is causing collateral damage and it's unavoidable that people's lives are going to get affected. People are going to be killed. People caught in the crossfire and yeah. Bix, you know, she's feeling it like, get out of here. I don't want anything to do with it. And this is the empire strategy, yeah. like cause inflict collateral damage until they betray whoever the bad person is from the empire's perspective. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, even if they second guess it, not even necessarily betray them, just get in line, don't do anything more. It's still a win for the Empire. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because this guy, she she could have been a resource for Cassian, but now she's like, nope, go away. I can't help you anymore. That's right. It's too dangerous. That's right. (sighs) Ah, another round, another round of collateral damage. Clem, Clem Andor, Cassian's adopted father, he's doing the right thing here. He's shutting down the the fight that these that the the um Fen- Phyrexians, sure, they're throwing rocks at the stormtroopers. Also, yeah. don't throw rocks at the stormtroopers. They're the one they have armor. Throw rocks at the commander dude. Like <laughs> what are we doing? But Clem steps out, he steps out to do the right thing to shut it down, and the Empire kills him. They in fact hang him. It's another instance of of the Empire just coming down too hard. Which mm-hmm. creates rebels. This is uh, in the past, right? This is, this is before. Past, yeah, yeah. yeah, this is before the events we're, we're following. Yeah. It's it's just it was so heavy handed. I don't know how Cassian at this point isn't a part of the rebellion. He kind of went the other direction where he's like, "Screw it, I'm not. I want to be. I want to be out of here. I killed my dad. I'm out." Yeah. Yeah. It's too brutal. I mean, I see it. I see it when somebody comes in with just extreme authority. Either you fold and you keep your head down, or you fight back. And depending on the brute, the the ruthlessness, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Well, he even instead of keeping his head down, he just wants to leave. Yeah, just, just, just check out. Just yeah, check out. Yeah. That was a brutal scene. Even though it was a short scene, scene, it was a brutal scene. It was a brutal scene. I felt it. Yeah. So maybe along the same lines, like we, we never know what causes um, Canari to be deemed as like a biohazard. Get the fuck out. Right? Mm-hmm. I wonder if if when Marva and Clem take Cassian um, right before that, the the Lord of the Flies kids, like they killed that Imperial guy from from the ship. I wonder if the Empire came down and they're like, one of our guys is dead from poison darts. Like you don't. We we don't allow people to harm our people. We come down on them hard. Maybe they chemically destroyed the planet to prove a point to people. Like you don't ever hurt imperial people. I mean, maybe. I mean, who is that going to prove? I mean, does the would that prove to other planets around the galaxy that you don't mess with the empire? I guess so. If word got out, maybe. I mean, but, that's that's what they're doing with the robbery, with the Aldani robbery. They're saying every planet, because of this, you have to pay five times the tribute. Maybe there was, I mean, however many years ago, decades ago, right? They're like, this happened in this planet. You don't mm-hmm. do this. We wipe the planet. Everyone get okay. in line. Could have been. I don't know. It's consistent maybe that, at least with their maybe, over with their heavy hand. Yeah, maybe that's why it's it's poisoned. It wasn't the mining runoff or anything. It was they actually agent orange the planet. The entire surface, and now it's, you know, nobody can live there. That could be. You poison us, we poison you. Mm-hmm. Oof, oof, maybe. Ah, uh, yeah. So they end their argument, and Marva has decided to stay on Ferrix, and she's told Andor, you know, go away, and he does. And then at the end, I see her struggling to walk. She's she's got a cane. In her in her left hand, Ooh, she's got a cane. She got a cane in her left hand, and she's got her her rifle in her left and her right. And she's she's a bit wobbly. You know, she's she's a bit unstable. And so I thought, I mean, maybe maybe this is because we're recording this around Christmas time. But but uh, and or get get your mama a sling. She don't got to carry that everywhere. You just wrap it around her, or maybe maybe even a little pistol. Like you can get her like a Han Solo sized pistol. Like, got a little scope on it. It can shoot far away. She doesn't need to be lugging around this thing. Come on, Andor. That's right. That'd be a Holiday great spirit. Christmas gift. If you're a partisan rebel in some situation <laughs> in your life, get your mama's, you know, a strap for her gun. Yeah. Yeah. Get her a strap so she can stay strapped. Yep. 
without having your hand get all tired. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe for the little one, get a flashbang. Goo goo ga ga. Flashbang out. <laughs> flashbang out. Send it. I know. The little red robot guy, I'd accessorize him, accessorize him with all sorts of tactical equipment. Mm-hmm. This is just another shot of a uh, Coruscant. Oh. This is the Imperial Excellent. Security Bureau, right? Yeah, this is the ISB. I looked at this and I saw like that's real. Like, why is the sky that color? Is that fog or smog or what is going on there? I mean, it does look like pollution, and it would be hard to keep the atmosphere clean in such a densely populated city planet. So I assume it's pollution. So Coruscant becomes L.A. during the day. Yeah, which is a sad (laughs) statement about L.A. because L.A. is tiny compared to Coruscant. So the pollution is in Coruscant are much better. Yeah. Oh, I see it. Even though LA is much smaller than Coruscant, they're still having a hard time. Yeah. 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 Yep. And it's just density and fossil fuels. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I doubt Coruscant uses fossil fuels, but just with so many people, it would be hard to keep pollution to emit to zero. Agreed. Captain Coruscant, he's our hero. Gonna good transition to a scene about Miro. Very nice. She's ISB gonna hurt me that's her job she doesn't take it lightly so this is miro (laughs) yep this is what's his name the commander of the ratagaz ratagaz and this is 11 11 and they just had this big exchange where miro is trying to elbow into blevin's space and miro outmaneuvers him in front of everybody and then she walks off in triumph Mm-hmm. bureaucratic infighting it's going to bring down the empire but was she right actually like they both have very good points i mean i think the right answer is that the bureaucracy needs to change and adapt but within uh-huh. a set of rules right and she but shouldn't we- be breaking the rules so so blevin is is promoting that they stay in their zones Everyone has their sector, stay in your sector. And and Miro is saying that, like, no, 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 we want to be able to cross boundaries so that we can gather information from multiple places. Maybe there's a pattern established. But and, and that makes a lot of sense from Miro's perspective. However, from Blevin's perspective, there's also a lot of risk in having cross sector yeah. communication. Because say if she if Miro is a rebel agent, like now she can spy on everything that they do. Blevins' course of action would be right to control information. So if you know that something's weird going on in Blevins' sector, there's no one else to blame except Blevin. Here, once information is shared amongst everyone, you could have rebel agents anywhere. You don't know. And they'd have access to everything. At the same time, one of the criticisms historically of intelligence agencies is that they don't share information and they get compartmentalized so much that they have all the information necessary sure. to see things coming, but nobody is able to put it together. I think I think the primary problem is Blevin follows the rules, but is not open to changing them. Whereas mm-hmm. Miro is not following the rules, but is open to changing them. The, the, the combination of the two. They exactly. need to follow the rules and be open to their change. Right. That would be optimal. I also wondered, maybe Blevin is a rebel agent. He could be. Yeah. He came over, took over the problem, and he's like, squash it, squelch it. Mm-hmm. Nobody reads my report. Mm-hmm. I control the information. Yeah, he's like bureaucratically dragging his feet to give an opening to the rebels. I could see it. Maybe. 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 We'll see. Maybe. And this is her face when he accuses is. her. He accuses yeah. her. And, and it's so risky. It's so risky what, what uh, Major Partagas is... Radagast. Radagast is is the brown mm-hmm. wizard from from um, the Hobbit. So this guy's name is mm-hmm. Major Partagas. So Partagas, very risky thing that he's doing. He's approving Miro's ability to float between sectors. But if she is a re- rebel agent, and she's new to the ISP, if she's a rebel agent, then now he just gave her free reign to access mm-hmm. whatever. So risky. But I mean, if you have rebel agents at that high up at the bureaucracy, 
I think no rule or anything is going to protect you much. Um, I think the bigger issue is like in front of everybody, they have an unresolved thing and publicly humiliating Blevin while advocating for rule breaking. That should have been done behind closed doors and then presented to everybody as a new set of rules, I think. It's interesting because it also sends a message to everyone else in the room like, hey, watch your back because you can get you can get struck at in front of everyone. Somebody could attack right. you. Also, B, do whatever you want and just defend it well. You're fine. <laughs> like yeah. Rules don't actually matter. Right. Let's we'll see how this plays out. Risky move, part of guess. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Nymos. Oh, yeah. Good old Ryza. Oh, wait. Star Trek. The other side. So it's <laughs> Nymos is the planet. Uh, on the other side is the beach resort Ryza. That's right. With Captain Picard and Riker hanging out. That's false. I mean, what a, what a nice place. Are we sure we don't like the Empire? I mean, look how clean and wonderful this place is. What a resort. It's like a, it's like a space-based Cabo San Lucas. Cabo, Cabo San Naimos. Exactly. And look how, I without mean, the, I would without love them, to hang out the here. Without the drug murders. Without the drug murders. This place, I mean, talk shit about the Empire, but like this place is clean and mm -hmm. bright and there's place to run and play <laughs> yeah. clearly oh, yeah. multicultural multi-species like this place is running well like this is a nice resort yeah. place until cassian gets hauled away because i don't actually he still doesn't we still don't know what he did he was just caught uh, up he didn't really do anything he didn't really do like, anything but in terms of the, the empire's purview purview they're like you're resisting and then because he got caught up in the new legislative changes, it went from a sentence of like weeks to years. Yeah. Crazy. Wild. Yeah. He never lost character though. He never, he always stayed with his name and always claimed he was just a tourist. And he didn't know, you know, he didn't do anything. And that's correct. He didn't. My name's Keith. Yeah. Yeah. Be hard to stay composed though. Oh, and that's it. That's, that was the end. Season one, episode seven. Episode seven. We'll be yeah, back in a bit. Season one, yeah. episode eight. Yeah. See you guys uh, next time for, for episode eight. If you have any comments, if you have anything uh, to say to us. I'm so excited. What's going to yeah. go down? It's going to go down. SSU out. <laughs>